Those of you that have watched my previous project videos know that I do some electronic projects and in that regard this five things is going to cover five tools that I find very useful when doing those projects. The first item is a circuit board holder. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to solder something and not be able to hold on to the board. And here is the board that I'm working on, and it's actually a display board for the version 1.5 of my upcoming trailer test set project. I have the traditional pan of ice, which is what many electronics type people use. And it's not too bad. You can adjust this jaws to any way you want. But the main problem with this is it takes forever to crank on this to get it to the size that you want. I don't really use this that much. What I really like, and it's kind of been designed for the cell phone market, but I can use it for most of my circuit boards. And you have two little arms here and an arm here that's spring-loaded. And simply, you take your circuit board and put it under the first arm and then push up on it and let it attach itself. And you can adjust these and you can adjust the tension on it. Actually, I like this one really well. And this one actually is better for smaller boards, which I tend to use more because these boards can get quite expensive. And the next item you'll want to have is a nice set of tweezers. These are ESD, or electrostatic discharge. And you can get them in a sharp point like this, or a flat point like that. And as you can see, the tweezers are great for handling these small SMD components. And although this is not part of the five things, I will show you how I solder SMD chips. And I like to orient the board a little bit better. And we're going to solder to a resistor R2 right here. As you see, I did put a little blob of solder there. No solder on the other side. And then I position the SMT component and just tack it in place like that. Then I take my fingernail, push down on the center of the component, and then tack it again. And you may have heard it snap. That flattens it in place. And then rotate the board 180 degrees. And then solder the other side. And that's all there is to it. Now at some point you're going to mess up and you put the wrong component on and you're going to have to take the component off. So this is a tip cutter and it's made by Engineer, made in Japan. You can see there's a little set of jaws. You probably will destroy the chip and you can see where I just cut the chip out. This is an MG Chemical Super Wick, number 423 fine braid, and it's 1.0 millimeter wide. As you use this, it gets solder built up on it. And this is just copper braid, so we have to cut the solder off so we have a fresh piece. I just set the braid down, put the soldering iron over it, and what happens is the solder wicks away, as you can see here. Sometimes you need a solder sucker. What I like to use is this solder sucker from Vampire Tools. Now I've used a bunch of different solder suckers, everything from a bulb like this to the plunger type, and this is the plunger type, but this is by far the best one I've ever run across. And again, it's made by Vampire Tools, which is basically the US version of Engineer. Uh, so the Engineer brand is designed for the Japanese market. Vampire, I believe, is designed for the U.S. market. And this has a replaceable silicone tip. You just charge it. And I'm at left-handed, so I'll do it this way. And then, when you do that, it will suck solder off the board. It actually works better on components that are through-hole versus surface mount. And then I just heat the through-hole up, put the solder sucker on there, and you can see where it took some solder out of there. 
What happens if I get this thing right, you'll see there's no solder between the through hole pin and the pad. And that's what you need to be able to pull it out. And I do have a couple more engineer tools, which you haven't figured out. I like the engineer brand. And here, you know, basically just a set of needle nose. Here's a diagonal cutter. And you can be used as a chip extractor, but you can also cut, you know, the leads off. And this is just a larger version of the saw set cutter. And this is made by Fujiwa, also made in Japan. And here's a set of combo pliers, a set of wire cutter nippers on one end, and a set of wire strippers on this end. The way these work is with the uh, cutoff, you know, just straightforward. But with the wire strippers, you just put the wire in there and squeeze this down, and it will strip the wire. So these are nice and handy to have as well, and they're not that expensive. You see there's one spring on here. There used to be a spring on this side too, but it made it so hard to squeeze that I end up taking the spring off this side, and this is just the right tension. Here's a bonus. This is beyond the five things. Uh, this is a ruler from DigiKey. It's a printed circuit board ruler. It's actually made with printed circuit board material. It's probably more useful if you're designing boards than you are just constructing, but there's still some information that you can use. I mean, it's got the screw hole diameters in here. It's got uh, wire diameters here, and it does have uh, some cross references. Plus, it gives you an idea of the different packages, because sometimes the surface mount especially They'll be called SMA, SMB, SMC, hundreds of different designators, and then you can see what the pattern is for those. So that's a little bit useful. And you can buy this from DigiKey itself. It's around, I think, $5. And the nice thing is that on one side, it is a millimeter. Then on the other side, one half the scale is in 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 quarter increments. The other side is in tenths.